Today we have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x times the natural logarithm of 1 plus the cosine of x. And it doesn't seem as crazy as most of the integrals we do here, but it's a pretty wild ride and it yields an absolutely amazing solution development and a beautiful final result. So yeah, it's full of pleasant surprises. Now without further delay, let's get started with this 1 plus cosine of x term. It's the argument of the natural logarithm, so I might as well invoke the double angle formula for the cosine to write this as 1 plus cosine x equal to 2 times cosine square x by 2. This means that the target integral i is now the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x times log 2 cosine square x by 2 integration with respect to x. Now using the properties of the logarithm, we can write this as the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x times log 2 plus 2 times log cosine x by 2 dx, and now invoking the linearity of the integration operator, we have the integral from 0 to pi by 2, rather log 2 times this integral of x dx plus 2 times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x times log cosine x by 2 dx. Now the first integral here is pretty standard. It's going to sort out to pi squared by 8. So the first term on the right hand side is pi squared by 8 times log 2 plus twice this integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x times log cosine x by 2 dx. Now substitution here seems a no-brainer. We're going to let x by 2 equal u, which implies that dx equals 2 du. So this implies that i equals pi squared by 8 times log 2 plus 2 times the integral now from 0 to pi by 4 of x, which is now 2u, and we have log cosine u, and the differential element is now 2 du. So multiplying out all the 2's gives us pi squared by 8 times log 2 plus 8 times the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of u times the logarithm of cosine u integration with respect to u. Now this integral is a pretty interesting one in itself. And to solve it, we need the help of a really cool infinite series expansion. What I'm talking about is the series expansion for log cosine x. So we have log cosine u equal to negative log 2 plus the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times cosine 2ku divided by k. Link in the description below for a proof. I have a video proof for YouTube as well as a write-up on my Instagram. Be sure to drop me a follow over there as well. And we're interested in multiplying the whole thing by u, or the integrand. And there we go. And we're integrating from 0 to pi by 4. So once again, the integral, the first integral on the right-hand side is pretty standard. It's going to yield negative pi squared by 32 times log 2 plus... Now, the integral on the left-hand side converges... So for the integral of the sum on the right-hand side, we can switch up the integration and summation operators and write this as the sum over the positive and interest k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k times the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of u times the cosine of 2ku du, where the negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k term is independent of the u variable, so we're just taking it outside the integration operator. Now for the remaining integral, this u times cosine 2 ku integral, we're just going to use integration by parts. So we're going to differentiate the u function and integrate the cosine 2 ku function. On differentiation, we get a 1 and a 0, and on integration, we get sine 2 ku divided by 2 k, and then we get negative cosine 2 ku divided by 4 k squared. 
we have the alternating plus and minus signs, and this is how we multiply things. So that means the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of u times the cosine of 2ku du equals u times sine 2ku divided by 2k, with the limits being 0 and pi by 4. Two negatives cancel out. We get a plus sign, cosine 2ku divided by 4k squared. Again, limits are 0 and pi by 4. Now, as u approaches pi by 4, we get pi by 8k times the sine of k pi by 2. And as u approaches 0, the entire thing collapses to 0. Plus, for the cosine term, we have 1 by 4k squared times cosine k pi by 2 minus the cosine of 0 is 1. Okay, so that's what the integral evaluates out to, but our target integral was this one here, u times log cosine u. And for that, we have first up this negative pi squared by 32 term, then the infinite series involving that integral we just solved. So we have the integral from 0 to pi by 4, of u times log cosine u du equal to negative pi squared by 32 log 2 plus the sum over k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k times this entire mess that I'm going to call s sub 1 plus s sub 2. So first up we have s sub 1 which is the sum over the positive and k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k times pi by 8k. So we have pi by 8 outside, k squared down here, and we have sine of k pi by 2. Now the obvious strategy here would be to split up the sum into one sum over the even values of k and another over the odd values of k. So we have pi by 8 times the sum over, for the even values of k, we let k equal to 2 times n, where n starts at 1. So we have negative 1 to the 2n plus 1 divided by 2n squared. And we have the sine of n times pi, which is, of course, 0 because of the sine term. Then we have another sum, again, over the positive integers n of negative 1, 2, in this case k equals 2n plus 1, so we have 2n plus 1 plus 1, that is 2n plus 2, divided by 2n plus 1 squared, times the sine of 2n plus 1 times pi by 2. Okay, cool. So negative 1 to the 2n plus 2, 2n plus 2 is always going to be an even number, so we have negative 1 to an even number always being equal to 1. Now, what exactly is the sign of an odd integer multiple of pi by 2? That's either negative 1 or positive 1. So we have sine of 2n plus 1 times pi by 2. In our case, we have n starting at 1. So if n equals 1, then we have sine of 3 pi by 2, which is negative 1, meaning that negative 1 to the n actually makes sense. So we conclude that our sum s sub 1 equals pi by 8 times the sum over the positive integers n of negative 1 to the n divided by 2n plus 1 squared, which we recognize as an important constant. This is the original top g, Catalan's constant. So we have s sub 1 equal to pi by 8 times Catalan's constant, the constant that makes Andrew Tate look like some purple-haired teenager who identifies as a toaster. For s sub 2, again, we have a similar strategy. We're going to split the sum into one sum over the even values and another over the odd values. So for the even values, we have, well, we have this common multiple of a quarter. And for the first sum, we have the sum over n, where k equals 2 times n. So we have negative 1 to the 2n plus 1 divided by 2n cubed times cosine n times pi minus 1 plus the sum over n, where k equals now 2n plus 1. So we have 2n plus 2 divided by 2n plus 1 cubed times cosine of 2n plus 1 times pi by 2 minus 1. Now, what exactly is the cosine 
of an odd integer multiple of pi by 2. Well, that's just 0. So that means we have a quarter times the sum over n of negative 1 to the 2 n plus 1 is just negative 1. So we have negative 1 divided by 8 n cubed times what exactly is the cosine of n times pi? Now cosine n times pi with n starting at 1. So that would be negative 1. So this should be negative 1 to the n. Yeah, that sounds about right. So that means we have negative 1 to the n minus 1 here. Okay, cool. Minus the sum over... No, wait. This is going to be a plus sign. The sum over n of... What exactly do we have here? No, it is, an, it is a negative sign. So that's 1 by 2n plus 1 cubed. Now this negative 1 to the n term prompts us to again make another analysis of even versus odd values of n. Now for even values of n, we have 1 minus 1 just being 0. So let's reshape this sum a bit and write this as the sum over the positive integers n starting at 0, where I'm only considering the odd values to be significant, so that means I need to start my sum at 0. We have negative 1 and negative 1 to some odd value, that's 2n plus 1, whatever, that's going to be negative 2, so we have 2 here divided by 8, so that could that's going to be a quarter, uh, 2n plus 1 cubed here. Yeah, that should be perfectly fine. Minus 1 sum over n of 1 by 2n plus 1 cubed. And look, they're exactly the same thing. So you have a quarter minus 1 being negative 3 quarters. So you have negative 3 sixteenths of this sum here. That is in fact 7 eighths of Apri's constant, that zeta 3. So we have negative 3 by 16 times 7 eighths. And that should give me negative 21 by... I have a factor of 8 somewhere, I recall. So I'm just going to leave it there. So I have negative 21 divided by 8 times 16 times zeta 3. That's Apri's constant. Okay, so that's S sub 2. Another beautiful result. And now it's time to piece everything together. Okay, so the target integral, I needed 8 times this integral here, which equaled all of this stuff involving S sub 1 and S sub 2, and we have the values of those two infinite series. So, we conclude that I equals pi squared by 8 times log 2 plus multiplying 8 by everything gives me pi times Catalan's constant minus 21 by 16 times zeta 3. And we also have this negative pi squared by 4 times log 2. Now pi squared by 8 is 1 half of pi squared by 4, so we have half minus 1, which is negative 1 half, right? That was the hardest part of the calculation, by the way. So we conclude that the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x times the logarithm of 1 plus cosine x equals this beautiful result of pi times Catalan's constant minus 21 by 16 times Apri's constant minus pi squared by 8 times log 2. I mean, just look at it. This is incredible. This is amazing. This is, this is why you watch the channel and this is why I make videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.